So the background to this talk starts actually about 10 years ago. In fact, in 2007, I gave a talk on a similar subject, um, having only three years prior to that started working in the market research industry. Um, the context was my background and my career started in the 90s when I worked in the, what was known as data analytics and data mining, coming from a computer science and artificial intelligence background at the time. And after several years, it's only then I moved into market research about 2004. And one thing I found at the time was um, what I considered this chasm between quant researchers um, in the market research area and people who worked on what I consider to be fairly similar problems coming from a computer science or AI background. So I was quite interested in why that uh, chasm existed and what we could do about it in both the research industries and then at the time the analytics industry. Now, 10 years on, I thought I'd re-examine the subject. And that's particularly because in that time there's been so much change that's occurred. That's change in the research industry, um, and I'll particularly talk about that, but also especially change in the area of data analytics and what we now call data science, which is this burgeoning industry that really didn't exist in the same way at all 10 years ago. So what I'll be doing is going through a few themes that I see emerging in the industry and uh, looking at where I see that will create both risks and opportunities for market research. So on the next slide you'll see uh, really a headline summary that I took just recently um, as some data points to think about the career uh, situation today for market research for quant researchers. So this, these data points come from LinkedIn uh, US-based search and you'll see there that as of last month there were 12,000 jobs advertised in the US only and I focus there just for the sake of a benchmark in market research. So, and we know market research is a pretty big industry as it is. As some kind of reference benchmark, I looked for a searchable term for SPSS as a subset of that, and that was 2,000 jobs. The intention is that's kind of a rough heuristic for certain quant aspects of market research. So compared to that, how large is the data science industry in terms of careers today? So on the same time, data science uh, uh, search terms came up around 5,000 jobs. So we see as a comparison that market research in total is, of course, still bigger than data science. The question I have is not so much about what is the scale today, but what will happen in five or ten years from now. The other two points of comparison I thought were important were looking overall at statistics in the large. Of course, that's a much larger um, career um, uh, in, or set of careers or a larger um, set of roles available. And of course, analytics is even a bigger um, industry. There's a huge number of jobs available in that burgeoning industry that does move more into databases and business intelligence. So the question is for you, what do we think this is going to look like in five or ten years? I think we can be confident that data science jobs will increase in that time and other related jobs that we may not even have defined today. The question is going to be what will happen to market research jobs and will they in fact potentially suffer in some cases because of the growth of these other areas. Now, I've went, in preparing this presentation, I spoke to a number of colleagues in the market research industry, both in agencies and clients, to get their perspective. And one of the observations they made initially was, well, aren't market researchers pretty different to data scientists? Now, prima facie, um, the answer is, uh, in some ways, yes. And this data validates that point. So on the left-hand side, we get a headline profile of what market researchers look like. Um, we have, a, you know, roughly a gender kind of balance, or well, there's a 44, 56 male, female split, so not not quite perfectly balanced, but but certainly uh, broadly demographically balanced. In terms of education, we see that market researchers are well educated, as we know, and well qualified um, uh, uh, as a profile. In contrast, however, data scientists, there's a significant demographic uh, uh, difference, a massive bias towards males in data scientists. The other thing we see there, although we thought that market researchers are well qualified, we see that almost 90% of data scientists have either a PhD or a master's degree. The other big difference is the type of qualification they have. So we see in data scientists, there's an overwhelming focus on qualifications in engineering, computer science, and mathematics. So that's much more specific, hard, and very technical disciplines. 
So prima facie, we think actually market researchers are different to um, data scientists. However, looking into that further, really what are the differences? So again, within market research, we understand the difference between the quant and qual uh, aspects of market research. We know that those, those things blur together and there's a lot of overlap between the two. However, looking specifically at quant researchers, how do they differ from data scientists and those working in the data analytics area? My assessment is that at a level of technical sophistication around mathematical knowledge, statistical knowledge, there's not a lot of difference in their technical ability or quantitative ability. The bigger difference, however, comes in two things. One is data scientists uh, typically know how to program, and often they're excellent programmers. That's partly because of their training, but actually partly because of the kind of way that they think about problems. But the interrelated component is not just what they do and their skills, but actually the kind of data they use. So typically, data scientists work with different kinds of data. Sometimes these mean larger data sets, but it's actually, typically, they don't start with uh, market research survey data. They can use that, but it's actually all kinds of other data, and in fact, almost anything other than that is where they start with. And often that data is much larger and therefore requires programming ability to be able to manage it. However, I'd say from a, a quantitative skill set continuum, um, other differences aren't nearly as distinct. The question is, is the ability to uh, write reasonable software, so computer programming, a sustainable difference between quantum researchers and data scientists? So, and that's the question I'd like to examine. In doing that, what I was looking at is what are the key trends that have been influencing the research industry in recent years and how will they evolve over time? And in a moment, I'll just go through three key disruptions that have been occurring and are occurring in the research industry. And then two implications of that, one not so good, but one great opportunity. So the first disruption is one which I call here self-service data collection. And it's something we're all very familiar with in the research industry. And it's around the way in which over the last 10 years there's been an enormous change in the way that uh, surveys are uh, conducted in terms of, um, we know we moved away from a long time ago from CATI and other to online collection. But in particular, the more significant move from a research process perspective in terms of analysis is the way in which that data is collected and the tools available. So we have a whole suite of online tools of the ones that we can see there, whether it's Qualtrics, Google, SurveyMonkey, and a whole suite of others um, that are available. And what they do, of course, is mean, make it much easier for data to be collected. But in particular, in respect of what I'm discussing, it's actually the ability to have that data available and then seamlessly move across into some kind of analysis platform. And that has created an incredible difference because it means that a lot of the overhead and manual workaround that would have occurred in more traditional processes no longer exists. So now it means that a researcher, a talented researcher, themselves can actually directly integrate with an online collection platform, pull the data in from a survey immediately after the, the data has been collected, and then commence either data cleansing or analysis straight away, so without further manual intervention. And that changes significantly that process time um, from collection to analysis. Second trend is around uh, this evolving one, which is a self-service analysis and reporting. Um, this is one I must acknowledge um, particularly close to my heart because we work in this territory with the product, products like Q and Displayer. But it's one which is um, less advanced today than the self-service data collection, but uh, something which is really no less significant in the extent of change that it can lead for businesses. So. Um, Tools which enable this self-service analysis and reporting mean that once the data has been available from these self-service collection platforms, there's an ability to end-to-end -to -end move from that raw data straight off the collection platform all the way through all the analysis that's required by um, a researcher or an analyst. So what these tools do, of course, is enable you to take the data from the collection platform, clean the data within that tool using various automated techniques, um, quality checking and so on, um, do initial pre-processing, manipulating for the coding that's required, and then straight away from that uh, data manipulation, move into preliminary analysis. That analysis allows you to kind of see initial insights, basic tables and reporting. 
And then from there, in the same tool, move from there to more advanced analysis, whether it's segmentation, conjoin, if that's appropriate, whatever's relevant. And then at the end of that, develop reports, visualization, um, uh, whatever's required. This is a key thing which has changed um, the industry in addition to that telescope service collection because it means that a researcher is actually able themselves to move from collection um, uh, directly from the online collection platform through to that end-to-end -end analysis all the way through to what a client will eventually need in terms of the final research report. So it, may, it really accelerates down the ability to quickly generate insights and reduce a couple of pairs of hands in a classic agency where there's been uh, often a handover between different uh, teams. Now the third disruption is one particularly close to my heart given the background that I mentioned that I had before. And it's something which has been talked about for a long time um, but still today not nearly as frequently actioned as uh, I would like to have seen. And that's around the deep integration of different kinds of data sets. Um, the quote I've got here is from someone I spoke to who works in a large client um, organization as a um, person runs a research department. And what he said to me was, in the last two years, um, my recruitment profile has changed considerably. I've added two data scientists, a strategist, and a UX designer to a team which previously had only market researchers. Over time, this diversification will only increase. Now, what this person was talking about is their own needs for analysis and creation of insights. They used to work in a team which manage market research, that's what they did. But in that organization, a large client, they had a lot of other data. And their data was data such, such, such as CRM, system data, behavioral data, loyalty data, um, and also uh, they saw data on online usage and online purchasing, purchasing behavior. What they wanted to do was to be able to integrate their research results with this, uh, this other data. And to do that, they needed to bring in certain new skill sets because the skill sets of their quant researchers wasn't adequate. So therefore what they did was hire data scientists who have a dip different background. The, we have in the research industry talked for a long time about the integration of survey data with other data and it's been used in some areas such as in um, segmentation for some time, in things like media mix modeling, um, but still it's been only uh, infrequent. In more recent years, online usage data has provided tremendous opportunity, but still from what I've seen, um, that ability to integrate the data sets to get a much richer, deeper uh, insight is not often used. Part of it is because simply joining a data can be difficult, but I consider a large part of it is because actually the analysis done of the different kinds of data typically are on different sides of that school divide. Quant researchers mainly work on survey data, data scientists, data analytics people work on that behavioral data, and there aren't enough people who bridge the gap. This to me is more of the opportunity and I think a disruption that is still to come in the years to come. So the first consequence of these disruptions is one which is already taking effect and many organizations have responded to this, which is a complete disruption of the traditional uh, data processing organizations and structures that existed in many organizations. So those data processing or DP teams, their, their roles used to be uh, to take the data that was collected from surveys to do the quality assurance, to kind of checking the, the, the work that enables and then the conversion of the data into something which can be used by a researcher to generate insights. Now we're seeing in many businesses those roles are completely changing, in fact sometimes even evaporating and as these, the, those particularly first two disruptions take effect, that is um, there's an ability to directly collect data in a more automated way from online collection platforms and secondly that there's an ability to automatically cleanse that data using these self-service analysis tools. That means that the role of DP can still be there, but it changes considerably. DP's role is more about process review, quality assurance, rather than manual working through data. The challenge there is actually for the careers of these DP analysts, because their roles really are no longer there in the way they were before. The good news is though, someone who's worked in DP for a long time has tremendously valuable skills around data generally, whether it's data quality assurance, data manipulation, process governance. These are still valuable and in the world, in the growing world of data, these skills will actually still be essential. Uh, my suggestion however is that um, the opportunity is for these analysts to actually move to an adjacent area and if they're able to pick up uh, skills such as even some basic programming in R or Python, 
it would really help them have some mobility, or learning some of those end-to-end -end software packages that I covered previously. However, the great opportunity is around what I call the rise of the superquant. It's a concept that's been talked about a lot, again, but I'm surprised there aren't as many people who've already moved into this area as I would have expected. So the profile of the superquant, as I call it, is someone who is a quant uh, analyst and researcher um, who's able to manage end-to-end -end a process for insight creation, quant insight creation, not just in the research spectrum, but actually into the data science and analytics spectrum, at least to some extent. So the profile is someone who's able to understand um, research methodologies, meet with clients as appropriate, and then in terms of what they can deliver, they have the end-to-end -end spectrum of being able to uh, directly connect with online collection platforms um, and collect the data that's being created from a survey, uh, move that into whichever platform they're using to manage quality assurance and quality review, and then getting support from the platform to make that a reasonably quick and automated process. Using the same software, then they do all of the analysis they need to do, whether that's perhaps basic reporting, but in particular, the ability to do more advanced modeling of any kind, create visualizations. Visualizations which can export into clients or export into whatever form they need. Um, and whether it's in that package or another, these same people, if appropriate, are able then to do more advanced data manipulation work and integrate behavioral data, such as online data, loyalty data, as I discussed. And where, where relevant, build additional models, which often are richest with that integration, and then export them or communicate back with the client. Today, we see, I, I certainly know a number of people today who are actually operating in this capacity, but to be frank, not very many of them. Um, what I see is actually these roles are needed, and that client I mentioned before, and many agencies are looking for more people like, like this. The challenge is, I think not enough researchers or data scientists have moved into the divide to take up this opportunity. So, as a final point, um, I consider that there are enormous opportunities available for quant researchers um, as a result of the growth of data science as a discipline, and there are four key ways in which um, someone can be ready for those opportunities. Number one is actually understand how to leverage other data types, so non-survey data, um, such as loyalty, online data, etc. Um, number two uh, is that the classic research discipline comes from a certain analysis background, and typically it's more a stats background rather than a background in AI. There's a whole suite of really exciting techniques available, which not all researchers are familiar with, and it's not too hard to learn them, so it's, it's, it's useful to be able to have the same vernacular of modeling and learn what some of the people from the data science background are having. Number three, learning to use R or Python, which are the two lingua franca of the data science world, will be tremendously helpful to have those conversations and I'm sure particularly to help support analysis of larger data sets. Alternatively, using software which enables some support of these platforms would be helpful. Finally, um, another area I haven't touched upon much is the advances in data visualization, which uh, continue to be quite exciting. And I think that's an area where there's great opportunity for researchers, particularly who have always been so good at communicating insights, to really take the lead on those advances and use them in their work. I'll now uh, hand back to Andrew. Um, thank you very much.